Hello Info Person, this is Anton and today I wanted to revisit one of the more mind-bending theories and propositions in cosmology when it comes to black holes and the universe. The possibility that our entire universe, everything we see, every galaxy, every star, you and me of course, might be located inside a very very massive black hole that's essentially universe-sized. And though it may sound like something out of pure science fiction, or something you might hear in one of these AI slop channels, in cosmology this idea does have an actual name. It's known as black hole cosmology. And it's built on remarkable mathematical coincidence that we're going to be exploring today. And since this idea started trending on YouTube once again, with even famous people like Neil deGrasse Tyson recently covering this on his channel, I figured let's actually jump in and explore some of the evidence we have and come up with some kind of a conclusion whether this can be real and if we actually do live inside a black hole or if there's evidence for the opposite. And so let's explore some of the supporting evidence and also explore physics that suggests that maybe the universe is not a black hole after all. Well, we know that a black hole is basically a region of space-time where gravity becomes so intense that nothing, not light, not information, can escape it. This is the famous event horizon. And the size of this event horizon, or the so-called Schwarzschild radius, surprisingly depends only on one property, the mass. So theoretically, anything can become a black hole. But more mass means a bigger black hole and a much wider radius. And so this is a direct linear relationship. Now consider the universe. Our observable universe also has a kind of a horizon, the cosmic horizon or the Hubble radius. And this is a distance beyond which light just did not have enough time to reach us yet since the beginning of the universe. And well, this is where we have this very bizarre coincidence. If you do some math and you take the total mass contained within the observable universe, which is basically 1 followed by 54 zeros or one septedencillion kilograms, and then you plug that number into the formula for black holes, the resulting hypothetical black hole is going to be approximately 300 billion light years across. And this calculation suggests that the size and the mass contained in the observable universe seems to fit the criteria for being a black hole. So quite compelling math here. But maybe this is just a coincidence. But I guess let's assume for a second that it's not. So first of all, how would the universe end up inside a black hole? Well, the idea here is that the universe was probably born on the outside of the black hole, inside some kind of a parent universe, which of course can also be another black hole. And so here, in classical physics and especially in the Einsteinian general relativity, any object collapsing under gravity must eventually reach singularity, a point of infinite density where all known physics break down. This of course includes the Big Bang itself, which starts from some kind of a singularity. But quite a few scientists, including those working on black hole cosmology, propose that singularities are not real and cannot possibly exist. And so instead of an endless collapse into a singularity, what if matter, once it reaches extreme density, stops collapsing and instead undergoes a kind of a bounce, resulting in a very rapid expansion. And well, the thing is, if you do the math here as well, this rebounding surprisingly seems to resemble very similar calculations to the idea behind Big Bang. The universe expands very fast, and here we don't need any points of infinite density. And so this mechanism provides an explanation for the origin of inertia, and this origin is some kind of a parent black hole. But from our side, it would resemble a primordial white hole, which is what Big Bang would be. And so just to rephrase this, in this parent universe, you would see a lot of mass collapsing into what resembles a black hole, but inside of this black hole, we essentially see the opposite. We see a massive white hole expanding, which results in a massive expansion that then creates our universe. And so instead of achieving singularity, we basically get a new universe inside the black hole's event horizon, with each black hole creating a new BB universe inside, and that in some sense represents the Einstein-Rosen bridge, or a wormhole. And assuming this is correct, and knowing what we know about black holes, if the parent black hole was rotating, for example, it's quite likely that it's going to impart certain properties, such as angular momentum, on some of the massive objects, including some of the galaxies, existing inside this baby universe. So basically, our universe would inherit some kind of a axis of rotation. This will become important in a few minutes, because we're going to talk about one of the recent discoveries. And so interestingly, quite a few different studies in the last few years tried to explore this from not just some kind of a hypothetical proposition, but really tried to find physical evidence. 
For example, one of the modern propositions from the black hole universe theories suggests that a lot of this seems to be driven by a purely relativistic effect combined with some of the key principle of quantum mechanics, specifically the Pauli exclusion principle, named after the famous Wolfgang Pauli. And the idea here is that a lot of particles known as fermions cannot possibly occupy the same space and the same energy, or to be more specific, the same quantum state. And so things like electrons and neutrons have to exist separately from each other. But at extremely high densities, this rule starts to generate a very powerful resistance referred to as degeneracy pressure. We know this exists because white dwarfs exist. The main reason why white dwarfs do not collapse anymore is because a lot of particles, specifically electrons inside of them, cannot get squeezed anymore. And so it's this degeneracy pressure that in a lot of these models completely stops the collapse of matter, preventing singularity from forming and then initiating a gravitational bounce that then produces a new universe. And once again, surprisingly, if you crunch the numbers, this bounce surprisingly resembles a very famous idea known as the inflation period. This is an extremely short period that happened right after the Big Bang, and that explains quite a lot of different observations from the universe. And so just to rephrase this, there are quite a lot of parallels between propositions from the black hole cosmology and from the modern explanations involving the Big Bang theory. With many of these mechanisms explaining the cosmic acceleration and the collapsing and expanding processes. But more importantly, the model also makes some testable predictions. And specifically, once again, in regards to cosmic rotation. If the universe is a black hole, it probably also rotates. Mostly because all black holes rotate as well. And this rotation should also be visible as a type of an angular momentum in a lot of galactic structures and even in galaxies themselves. And so a lot of galaxies will usually align their spins with a kind of a preferred axis of rotation to minimize energy. And so here this would result in a very specific asymmetry in spin direction. And surprisingly, in the last few years, some evidence for this has been observed, and we've discussed this in some of the previous videos in the description. For example, there was a discovery that certain spiral galaxies seem to show asymmetry in clockwise counterclockwise spins with most galaxies preferring a certain rotation. So basically galaxies rotating in the same way to the Milky Way was surprisingly higher compared to galaxies rotating in the opposite direction. And this kind of a non-random distribution of rotation of galaxies is exactly what you would expect if the universe was rotating, which may be the result of this being a massive black hole. Likewise, something similar in regards to rotation and alignment was also observed when looking at distant quasars. Many different quasars seem to align in the same way and do seem to contain somewhat similar rotation as well. And so could this be that evidence we require to prove that we basically live inside the black hole? Well, here we obviously have to discuss the counter evidence, but first let's answer a very simple question. Why does any of this matter? Well, for cosmology, this would be really important because it does address several unresolved challenges in the standard Big Bang model. For example, it obviously addresses the singularity problem. And that's because we have no idea what happened right at the beginning. The first tiny fraction of a second when the universe began is a complete mystery to us. And the current model assumes that this was a singularity. Something with infinite density and something that in physics does not make sense. Then we also have the problem of inflation. The evidence for inflation is definitely very strong, but we don't really have a good explanation. And so we don't really know why the universe expanded in size so dramatically and so quick in that first fraction of a second. Most explanations involved hypothetical fields and particles that have never been proven, but in the black hole cosmology we do have an elegant solution that requires nothing new. Likewise, this would also explain dark energy. Because the black hole is spinning and the universe is spinning as well, it produces centrifugal force that makes the universe expand even more. And surprisingly, this might also solve the Hubble tension problem or explain why dark energy seems to be weakening over time. So once again, another elegant solution. And so the overall takeaway here is that if black hole cosmology is correct, it might be able to solve a lot of problems all at once. So basically it's easier to explain many different observations if we do live inside a really large black hole. But this is where we have to discuss the counter evidence. Despite these compelling coincidences, and despite this somewhat elegant solution, most conventional cosmological observations still actually suggest that the universe is not a black hole and we do not seem to live inside one either. And the evidence here is maybe even stronger. And the first explanation here is in regards to what's known as isotropy. Our universe, on the largest scales, appears to be isotropic. 
In cosmology, this just means that it looks and acts in the same way in every single direction. It basically equally expands in all three spatial dimensions and even has the same temperature and same properties. A lot of this is based on very accurate observations of the earliest light in the universe, known as the CMB or the Cosmic Microwave Background. And this has a name, it's known as the Cosmological Principle. So basically we expect the universe to kind of be the same no matter where you go. But a black hole is mathematically anisotropic. Or basically it's not the same everywhere. And that's because inside a black hole, at least when it comes to math, space is severely distorted and is usually stretched in one direction and squeezed in the two other directions. This is for example why stars get spaghettified when they get too close to black holes. And so at least mathematically, if this was a black hole, we would expect certain gravitational distortions and certain types of stretching and squeezing in certain parts. But based on modern observations, we don't seem to see anything like this anywhere. Our universe simply does not show any kind of highly directional anisotropic expansion. And the second problem is once again density. Now in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the calculations for the universe seem to match the calculation for the mass of a black hole with a very specific size. And this calculation is based on the idea that the universe is finite. Or basically has a very specific size, which in this case would be that Schwarzschild radius for a black hole. And so because the universe is finite, this would also imply that the density should drop suddenly at the cosmic horizon, and that the size of the universe itself, the Hubble radius, also represents the black hole limit line. But this type of an analysis is based on two specific assumptions, or basically two possibilities. First possibility is that the density outside the black hole, or outside the universe, would supposedly drop to zero, becoming completely empty space. With the second possibility being that the density outside is the same as the density inside. So basically there's just no other option. Both of these would be a problem. If the density drops suddenly, this would be extremely difficult to explain with modern physics and would actually make no sense at all in any of the modern theories. But if the density is continuous and does not drop, the necessary mathematics that define the black hole boundary or the Schwarzschild radius completely break down as well. And so under these conditions, it essentially makes it impossible, at least in terms of math, to be inside any kind of a black hole. And so even though the idea does create some elegant explanations, it also creates some major problems for modern physics and certain problems that do not actually match the evidence. Although here you might be asking one question. Okay, so what about that evidence of rotating universe? What about the evidence coming from the quasars and the evidence from these rotating galaxies? Well, as I've discussed in the videos in the description, both of these actually have a much better explanation that does not require a black hole or even a rotating universe at all. Because both of these observations can also be explained if what we're looking at is the mysterious cosmic web. The enormous web of matter and various galaxies that seems to form the entire universe, where many galaxies are sort of guided and sort of pushed around by the flow of matter inside the web itself. And so by being inside of this web, many of these quasars and many of these galaxies are actually just naturally going to assume certain rotation in the same way that I guess you would expect different particles to behave the same way if they're flowing down the river. And while the evidence for cosmic web is pretty strong, scientists have even detected it physically in some of the recent studies. As a matter of fact, this explanation is much more accurate because for the rotating universe explanation, we should also be seeing a lot of other signs, such as for example signs inside the cosmic microwave background, which have never been seen before and are currently not visible to any of the telescopes. Okay, having said all this, so what's the possible conclusion? Well, the idea that our universe is inside a massive black hole is definitely captivating. It's based on a compelling mathematical picture and it does address certain cosmic mysteries and provides certain elegant solutions. But in cosmology, usually, a factual approach is a lot more important. Because based on a lot of previous experience, we know that elegant solutions are not always correct. And so based on some of the most fundamental observational facts and some of the most accurate observations, we know that the universe seems to be smooth, it seems to be isotropic, it does not seem to spin, and also does not seem to have a sudden shift of density on the edge of the universe, which suggests that it's unlikely to be a black hole and the effects we're observing seem to be the result of something entirely different. And specifically seem to be the result of the structure of the universe itself. And so as of late 2025, there is a lot more evidence for the universe just being the universe. We're most likely not living inside a supermassive black hole, 
and there's unlikely to be another parent universe somewhere out there. But either way, exploring these concepts is still important because it pushes us much closer in trying to solve a lot of these really complex problems and in trying to find the ultimate theory of them all the unified theory of quantum gravity. Now, scientists are not there yet, and there are still a lot of problems to be solved, but it's really these concepts, these observations, and these propositions that step by step are taking us closer to finally understanding everything out there. And so, at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Uh, so, what do you think? Do you think we're inside a black hole? Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. We'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. But until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Stay wonderful. Maybe subscribe. Maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Additionally, you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.